Welcome to the series where we're going through the cat pat phase three. The series started with finishing off our report, did our introduction, and then we completed our discussion and analysis. And now we got to come to the findings part of the pat. So let's go look at some examples of things that you can look for that can help you maximize the marks for this section. So we're doing this part over here, which is formulating our findings. Now, previously, just to take note, we looked at our discussion analysis and we basically provided a summary of the, our research and the information that we found. But we also included information from our phase two, which was our questionnaire, our spreadsheet and our databases. The main thing here is we need to formulate at least three. They don't say only three. You can do at least three. If you can find more, I would strongly suggest trying to aim for four. That if they don't like one of your claims, then at least you have three that are valid. And so you need to make claims, arguments or findings that are appropriate and relevant to your investigation. And the key here is your focus question. What is your focus question? What are you trying to find out? All these claims, arguments and findings must be answers to things related to the focus question and research questions. You might not have any research questions that you particularly had to find out information. At the most, we need to look at that focus question. We need to provide support for that information, either with data, information, graphs or diagrams. We need to provide meaningful explanations of how and why the evidence supports these findings and draw from the information presented in the report and address the original focus or statement in light of the evidence presented. So the key thing here is hopefully when we developed our focus question, hopefully that guided you with the research of your 10 questions. Hopefully that focus question also guided you with what type of questions you were going to ask in your questionnaire. And if you've done that, then hopefully we've got enough data and interesting enough data to be able to find our findings. So let's try to see what we can find. So I've just taken some random data that we did in our series and so there's no connection to anything but i'm just going to show you what are the things you should be looking for the one thing you can look for is look at your formulas that give specific summary information so if we look here if there's a dramatic difference in a particular min and max of a particular question if we look at the average does that correlate to something if the mode is significantly more those are things you can look at and see if there's anything that you can pick up as a trend or a finding or something that sticks out that's what i'm really looking for i'm looking for something that sticks out that's out of the ordinary that I can discuss. I'm looking for a pattern that is consistent throughout many situations or scenarios. Those are what I'm basically looking for. Things that stick out or a pattern that is consistent. And it all depends on your data. This is not a skill that everyone necessarily can have. So getting some insight, getting someone to help maybe look at your data and see what they see can help you maybe see something that you didn't pick up originally. The key thing for me, I find looking at pictures a lot better to understand than just numbers and stuff like that. So if we go to our charts and here's where we can try to find things. If I look at this, this is a summary of how many people said one, two, three, four and five of question four. There is no pattern here that I can pick up. Sometimes it's two, sometimes it's four. If if this number was over here by the five, then we could say, oh, majority of people are a four or a five. It's clearly that this is the majority of the people with a few people over here. But yeah, there is very little pattern. There's very little that sticks out. So I wouldn't be discussing much about this particular chart. Now, if I look at this chart, here we can see they asked the correlation between question one versus which city they were in. Now, there are two things that stick out for me here. Number one, if you look here at the cities, Cape Town is the only city that has a significantly larger number of no's than yeses, where all the others, the yeses outshine the no's. Why is that? Now, that obviously depends on your question and what that means is, but you can then say, that, well, in this case, Cape Town is more likely to say no, that could relate to this, or why is that? Why did you think that that is true? Hopefully by understanding what question one is, you can get a better understanding of that. The other thing that sticks out for me is Abeja has a significantly big difference between the yeses and the noes compared to the others. Obviously, this is the outlier for the special case. But if I look here, there is a little bit of yeses and noes, a little bit of yes and noes, a little bit of yes and noes. But here we've got a significant number of yeses, but very few noes. So that is quite a big disparity. So you could discuss what could the potential reason for that is related to your theme or focus question. 
just a reminder you can't go and do charts really on biographical data that's by itself like if you said how many people are from the different cities that's not really useful that just happens to be the people that you ask questions that's not asking anything related to your focus question if you were looking at the average age of people or the ages of the people in groups that doesn't affect anything you want to look at the data of the questions that you were asking about the focus question if you have to refer to the biographical data it must be in connection with these questions like we did here we looked at the city versus their opinion on question one so you need to incorporate stuff that relates to your focus question to your data to what you are trying to find out another option is to look at your external data there you might generate a chart from your external data that you added to your spreadsheet and maybe there's some information over here that you can find so yeah for example you can say majority of people have all three where half of the people will only do one or the other so you can talk about whatever this means in the context of your investigation so I would take for example this chart I would copy it you would come to your phase three report you come to your findings make sure that you paste it I would paste it as an image because I want to right click on it and save it as a picture because then I can use that picture in my website which we're going to do in the next part of the phase three I would incorporate a caption on your picture explaining what it's about and then underneath you discuss your findings so over here I've written a quick little blurb here but I want to show you that this blurb isn't really useful it just tells me what how we got that information and it doesn't actually tell me anything about the findings that we have discovered this is nice but it's not complete enough remember we want meaningful explanations of how the evidence supports your findings so you need to incorporate explaining like how this is a particular trend or that's a particular trend you need to explain what you are seeing you don't have to mention the exact numbers you don't have to say Cape Town had only four people that said no and two that said yes you don't have to mention specific numbers you can just talk the general overview so yeah I flesh it out a bit more talking about that there's an interesting result that Cape Town has more people saying no compared to yes obviously I made up this question that this is to deal with if they felt that AI was limiting job opportunities and then I gave an explanation of what I think could be the reason for this maybe there's more growth of AI in Cape Town maybe there's more training you can try to figure it out hopefully from your research you can try give a good estimate or an idea of what could be the reason why this trend is happening if we had to just read this this would be able to make sense by just glancing at it so you really want to be able to explain what you are finding in your data you can also look for information from your database now if I look at this query that we created there's nothing that really sticks out here we just got a bunch of dates and ages and numbers if I look here the most likely blues those numbers are all very similar nothing sticking out there the number of people that said yes to both there's only three of them that's a small number not particularly informative but when I did my grouping this becomes a bit more interesting yeah I can see the average per grade based on question four and there we can see that the grade 12s are quite significantly more than the others so this might be something that you want to talk about so you might want to take a screenshot of this incorporate it as a new diagram give it a caption and then discuss these numbers and what they mean to you what's your interpretation of them you could also look at for example one of your reports so yeah we've got a report where we can see it's grouped by yes no and maybe and so we just see a whole bunch of data but what's interesting yeah if you look there is quite a few people that said maybe compared to the no's and the yeses so that could be something although the yeses are quite close there but what I found interesting there's a number of no's there's only 10s and 11s and majority 10s that said no to this question so that might be something using this data you could try to go and talk well there we can see there's a, a distribution of 10s 11s and 12s here we see 10s 11s 12s but over here it's only 10s only 11s so maybe there's something about the grade 12s that are saying no for this question the key thing here is to keep looking at your focus question what are you trying to get from your focus question it must relate something to do with that if you're talking about the medical field then find information or trends relating to the medical field 
If you are trying to figure out people's views, then look at questions that ask about their views on certain things. Try to find information that connects with your focus question. Hopefully, when you did your questionnaire, you asked questions that were based on your focus question that will give you insight to that. So hopefully you can have that. But focus on that focus question and your research question. Provide evidence of your findings by using these charts. You might want to use information from your research, but ideally stick to your charts, stick to your queries, stick to your reports for that information. Provide meaningful explanations of what is happening in this information. Explain what's happening here so that I can read it and then just look at the data and understand it without even having to look too much into you. This should clearly explain what we are talking about from the diagram. And again, they say get information that leads to the original problem, which is your focus question. So here we talk about the findings. At least three claims must be made. I suggest you doing four just to make sure that if one of them isn't that great or, or the market doesn't like one of them, at least you've got three that are definitely appropriate that you have supported information or data regarding it. In other words, you've got pictures, charts, things like that, that, that you are basing that argument or claim on. You've got a meaningful explanation, but then this one is going to be quite challenging to get, but it's possible. It's talking about new thoughts or insights or details about the problem or investigation. Not everyone gets this mark, but it's something that you really got to have a lot of insight into your data. It really is useful if you've asked good questions in your survey, because then your data, especially if it aligns with your focus question, you might be able to pick up trends, but try to find some sort of new thoughts from the data. That's why over here, maybe a new thought would be that we didn't realize that Cape Town was so different in their views on this particular question. So that might be interpreted as something that is new, that is innovative, or the way you relate one question to another. Another, what is this connection to another? What are the implications of it? So that one is difficult to get, but you can try get it. You can at least get the first three and then attempt that one and try get all four marks. It is quite a challenging part of the report. Go look at your charts, go look at your data, go paste them in. If you haven't done it already, go write your explanations of your findings and get those marks. Hopefully this video has helped you with your cat pet. For more videos to help you with all things related to cats, go to YouTube and subscribe to Atmos Long RT and Cat. Don't forget about our computer terms channel. They can help you with theory. And remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long way.